Well, two of America's biggest adversaries, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping held a virtual summit earlier today as tensions escalate between both countries and the U.S. The two leaders praised their strengthening ties, Putin declaring that their relationship has reached an unprecedentedly high level, saying a new model of cooperation has been formed between our countries. So what does this mean for America and Americans? Joining us to discuss is our company, former U.S. ambassador to NATO and former U.S. special representative for Ukrainian negotiations, Kurt Volker, former White House advisor for the Trump administration, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, and host of the Gorka Reality Check right here on Newsmax. And we have former Pennsylvania senator and Newsmax senior political analyst, Rick Santorum. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Um, excited to talk to you about this. Ambassador Volker, I'm going to start with you. Um, Russia now knows that it has China's backing if it goes ahead with invading Ukraine. Obviously, we know President Biden has threatened extreme economic sanctions if Russia does attack Ukraine. But at this point, if China can financially back Russia, do Biden's sanctions mean anything to Putin? Yeah. Well, I would, I would not describe this as a marriage of convenience. I'd say maybe it's a fling of convenience. I think that the Chinese like the idea of Russia trying to push back on the Biden administration over Ukraine because China has designs on Taiwan. And so they'd like to see how this plays out and strengthen their hand on Taiwan. I don't see them giving much financial backing to Russia. In fact, I don't think they have a lot of respect for Russia. I think they see Russia as a country that uh, has fewer people in its population than China has pulled out of poverty into middle class. So they're, they're just willing to play this out to make mischief for the United States. Russia, on the other hand, likes to play the China card because they think that can scare the U.S. and the allies. Hmm. Well, Senator Santorum, yesterday we had Gordon Chang on our show who said if one of these two gets into a conflict, making the ambassador point, either with Ukraine or Taiwan, it will give the other incentive to do the same. So potentially putting the U.S. in a very vulnerable position. At that point, how does the U.S. respond? Well, obviously, the, the response, depending on who goes first, and it looks like uh, it, it's pretty clear the Russians are, are uh, you know, on, the, on the precipice of some sort of action in Ukraine. So uh, expecting Russia to sort of pull the trigger first, uh, it, it will depend on how Joe Biden responds. And if we, if we see uh, a reaction similar to what we saw in Afghanistan and, and, uh, and, and other conflicts that uh, Joe Biden has sort of shied away from and uh, then there's a there's a likelihood that uh, not only will uh, Putin proceed as far as he can, uh, but you'll start to see much more aggression out of China uh, when it comes to uh, Taiwan. And it's, and it's been very aggressive so far. So uh, both of these are very hot spots. And the thing that we have to be really conscious of is that, you know, we have a lot of folks, even in the conservative movement, uh, who uh, you know, are becoming non-interventionists, that this is none of our business. You know, we shouldn't be worried about Ukraine. We shouldn't be worried about Taiwan. This is this is incredibly short-sighted. Uh, this is this is these are serious conflicts that can have uh, you know, economic impacts on this country. Uh, you know, obviously, Taiwan's a huge and important part uh, of, uh, of the of the Asia Pacific trade uh, circuit. This is a this is a serious matter uh, that Republicans need to take seriously and quit playing politics with. Mm. Dr. Gorka, both of these countries have either said or alluded to the fact that they view the Biden administration as weak. Is there anything that Biden can do at this point to mend these relationships, fix them moving forward, change their perception? Uh, resign. Uh, first, make Donald Trump his vice president and let Donald Trump uh, continue where he he left uh, office so nothing this guy is, is is a feckless moron he's he's a senile old man who has shown weakness from the anchorage summit where tony blinken just sat there as the chinese deep uh, most senior diplomat made fun of him using dnc blm talking points what has he done to a hundred thousand uh, russian troops have amassed along the ukrainian border nothing will he send blankets and socks to kiev like obama did probably unless he thinks that's too provocative look let's be clear here xi jinping and putin don't like each other these are competing nations. They hate each other. However, they will have a marriage of convenience. Kurt's not right. This is a, not a fling. This is far more serious. When you have Putin openly call Xi Jinping, my dear friend, 
He doesn't call Biden his dear friend. He is signaling, guys, Biden is weak. America has withdrawn. It is time for us to take action. They're competing with each other. But as long as America is weak, they will exploit that weakness until Donald Trump is back in the White House. Hmm. Ambassador Volker, one of the reasons that Putin is threatening to invade Ukraine is because it's trying to become a part of NATO. But right now, the Ukraine doesn't have much to offer NATO. Does that hurt their chances of getting in? Uh, well, I would say that Ukraine has a lot to offer NATO, uh, but it also has a lot of internal problems. Ukraine has tremendous geography in Europe. It's the largest country wholly within Europe. If that were part of NATO, that would create a tremendous amount of space of allied territory. It also has the most battle-tested and largest military in Europe, probably second in capacity in Europe only to Turkey at this point. Uh, so it is, it is a serious country. The problem with Ukraine is that it has still underperformed on democracy, on economic reform, on civil control of the military, professionalization of the military, fighting corruption. There's a lot Ukraine needs to do to qualify for membership in NATO. But I think it would be fundamentally beneficial to NATO and to the United States for Ukraine to be successful and secure, because that would do the most to put pressure on Putin and show that Russia should also be a democratic, prosperous, and secure country, not the kind of authoritarian basket case that it is now. Hmm. Uh, this morning, Jen Psaki was asked about Biden's greatest foreign policy achievement. Here's what she had to say. Watch. This year and this season, so I would ask you, what does the administration consider your biggest achievement in foreign policy in this first year? And also, what lessons have you learned from what is arguably the biggest failure, which is Afghanistan? Uh, you know, this is a great question. I want to be thoughtful about it. I want to talk to the president about it, um, and I'm happy to do that. <laughs> All right, I'm out of wow. time here. So, Senator and Dr. Gorka, I'm wow. going to give you both 30 seconds each, but does, Senator, does he even have one? Well, obviously not. I mean, if the, if the press secretary can't fish some uh, something out, then uh, don't look at, at, at Sebastian Gork and I to help to bail her out. I mean, there's, there isn't anything. I mean, there's an, it's an embarrassment that the, the press secretary can't mention a single thing he's done internationally that would be an accomplishment. That is stunning. Seb, so final word here. The sarcastic Saki has one job. The propagandist in chief has one job to sell sleepy, creepy Biden's mm. regime. And she couldn't even think of one positive after 11 months. Tells you everything you need to know, guys. What an abject failure. It was shocking. Ambassador Volker, Dr. Gorka, and Senator Santorum, appreciate your insight here tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.